shopping plans or traveling plans for your weekend. We'll have a look at that in a few minutes. But first, Dave Schwartz is standing by with a look at some selected. Well, let's take a look at it, and there really isn't much to look at. Check this out. How about that? There's only a little bit of snow in Colorado and, oh, around Cheyenne, Wyoming. And as we head off to the west, well, I just wanted to show you this radar because there's nothing on it. It hasn't rained now in the Pacific Northwest for two days. That will continue, but some changes are on the way for the weekend, and we're going to have that for you in just a minute. Meanwhile, Oregon, Washington, Northern California, looking for nice sunny skies today with an, an offshore flow in California. That'll warm things up nicely around the Los Angeles Basin and also in San Diego. Temperatures will be warming into the 70s. We'll have all that and the forecast in just a second. You're watching the Weather Channel, your most accurate and dependable source of weather information 24 hours a day. I'm Dave Schwartz alongside Veronica Johnson, and I'll tell you what, it's been nice and dry in the northwest, but changes are on the way for the weekend, Veronica. That's true. It looks like another weak system is going to push into that part of the country. And even um, on the other end of things, on the other end of the country, it looks like they're looking at some cool overnight lows. We'll take a look at the whole forecast for you right now with that good morning forecast. The main story then, I guess, is a fairly dry frontal boundary that will begin whipping fairly eastward across the country. As it does, you'll notice not a whole lot of precipitation associated with it. Fairly dry and cool behind the front as the front starts to make its way into Tennessee by late afternoon. Elsewhere, though, in the west, the Pacific Northwest, that is, high pressure remains anchored over the Great Basin area and you'll notice that the gradient is fairly tight as we push into Southern California these are actually isobars that you see in the light beige color against the map and what that means then is with the tight gradient we'll be looking at some fairly strong Santa Ana winds if you live out there you know exactly what they are they'll be kicking in they're already kicking in fairly strong exceeding 50 miles per hour if not greater and then through the Intermountain West some very light snow showers will continue to fall how light well very very, 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 very light, that is. About a tenth of an inch then for the Colorado area. That'll be from about one to three inches that we expect to fall through this area. Aspen may be picking up another light dusting already on some packed powder conditions that they're seeing there. As far as those overnight lows, well, ahead of the front, some quite clear conditions and lack of moisture will keep the temperatures predominantly in the 20s, well back down into Georgia and even parts of Alabama for much of the eastern seaboard as well. With with even some teens working into the Appalachians. Notice the 30s then bulging into parts of Missouri as well as Illinois and Indiana. And then, yes, cool, cool weather temperatures right behind it in the 20s and teens. Warming up fairly nice, though. We'll see the 60s from Dallas through Kentucky around Paducah over to the nation's capital. And yet another spill of cool air works its way into the Minnesota area as well as to the northeast. Warm along the coast, temperatures in the 60s there. And now with the rest of the forecast, for your extended period, here's Dave Schwartz. Jet Street. It looks like... Story, Veronica. Check it out. Look at this dip in the east. That's going to allow the cool air to get reinforced over the weekend. But then as we head towards Sunday, the jet stream pattern flattens out. The cool air says bye-bye. And we generally have a warming trend across the Southland. And temperatures will be generally, oh, normal for this time of year all the way through the weekend. Now, as we start you off on Friday, here's the cold air. That will sag southward and eastward and temperatures only in the 30s and 40s during the day from Pittsburgh to Boston, New York. Meanwhile, we're nice and mild in Florida, highs in the 70s. South Texas gets the 70s too and a warm up for the plains. As we head in towards Sunday, well, we cool down across the north, but nothing brutal. Temperatures in the 30s for highs and gosh, in the early December, that's not too bad right along the Canadian border. And 60s and 70s predominate in the Southland. That will continue on into Monday. Weather-wise, well, there isn't very much to talk about. A weak system moving along the Gulf will spread a few showers into Jacksonville. Also, some rain for Miami and Tampa. 
Meanwhile, along the northern sections, an upper level disturbance, actually a warm front, will spread a few snow showers to the upper peninsula of Michigan and also into northern New England. That'll move out as we head over toward the weekend. And that next system that Veronica was talking about pushes in from the Pacific, spreading some coastal showers and some mountain snow showers on ahead of it, though very windy in the Yellowstone Valley. And as we see, by Sunday, things dry out completely in the east, except for a few snow showers in northern Maine. And here's your weak system, really not having that much of an impact, spreading some showers of snow, though, into the northern and central Rockies by Monday. That's a look at the forecast through the weekend. We'll check out some uh, specific forecasts for you. Our business travelers forecast is next. Then some satellite pictures. You want to see those. Story, Veronica. Buying Christmas presents for my boyfriend is one of the most impossible things ever. I can't even think of anything that's new or different or will please him. Catch this. It's Sports Illustrated's most exciting Christmas gift ever, the football phone. Free with a paid subscription to SI. I would love something like this for Christmas. The football phone works like a regular phone. It plugs into a standard jack and has push-button dialing, on-off ringer, mute button, and automatic redial. I hope she orders that for Christmas for me. And the football phone is free. That's even better. And I don't have to go shopping for it, I hope. What do I have to do to get this? It's free if you get Sports Illustrated at their biggest Christmas savings ever. A year subscription at almost 65% off the cover price. You can be billed after the new year, or you can use your credit card today. I'll buy it for my father, my brother, and my boyfriend. You only pay 99 cents an issue, and the subscription includes all the previews in the swimsuit issue. Sports Illustrated, I should have thought of that a long time ago. The mom, if you're watching, please, for once. In, thanks to the jet stream, 25,000 feet high in the atmosphere, and... Those aren't the kind of clouds that you get precipitation from. I guess that's rather fortunate. By and large, the Great Basin is all clear, the California coast, and all the way up into Washington. We do have a few showers now falling around Bellingham, Washington, but most of the action is pushed way up northward into British Columbia, thanks to a ridge of high pressure that's building over the western portion of the country. Now, as we take a picture of the entire country, we see the southeast totally clear. Texas, another clear, chilly morning, but winds are picking up out of the south, and that'll warm things up. And a weak cold front that's moving through the midsection of the country. That's the reason for those clouds we see stretched from Michigan all the way back into West Texas. But very little in the way of precipitation from that. Looks like a real nice day. We'll get to the forecast for you here in just a minute. And now it's time to take a look at those next five days for you, which will take you right through the weekend. You'll most certainly want to see what your forecast holds. If you have any shopping planned out there, you'll notice the frontal boundary stretching from the Midwest throughout the central part of the nation in Oklahoma back to the uh, Big Bend area in Texas. Then by midday, that front starts to shoot fairly quickly off to the east. And by late afternoon, you'll notice that it's starting to head on into central New York, sort of flirting with Alabama, Mississippi. And on the eastern shore, of Texas. Now, not much precipitation, not much in the way of the green stuff you'll notice on the map. It's a fairly dry front, yes, but it'll be pretty windy and chilly right behind it, especially around the Arkansas and Texas area. In the southeast, you'll notice also the lack of moisture as well, but in the Pacific Northwest, high pressure remains anchored over the Great Basin area, and what we'll be seeing here then is some very, very strong winds kicking in throughout Arizona, as well as especially in Southern California. California. Already we're looking at some wind watches for many of the valleys and the canyons in this area. Also, we'll be looking at an offshore flow warming things up substantially in the Pacific Northwest. Now, as far as those overnight lows, you'll notice it's fairly cool behind the front. The 30s, however, are starting to make their way all the way up into Missouri as well as southern Indiana and Illinois. And then the cooler weather starts to stretch into the Appalachians. Temperatures in the 20s here, but fairly easy to take in Miami, Florida temperatures in the 60s for overnight lows. The warm-up, yes, it'll be there somewhat in the southern part of the country. The 50s, or actually the 60s, will start to make it all into Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, even heading up into the Raleigh-Durham area. And then the 60s from the nation's capital back to Dallas and Texas. The 20s hang into the picture in the Minnesota area as well as Wisconsin. And then also cool back to the uh, Caribou area in Maine. But in the southwest, the remaining 
Mountains, pretty warm in the 70s. That's easy to take there. The 50s hold their own in Montana, but then temperatures start to modify as that jet stream goes zonal from west to east. Temperatures will be only in the 50s then throughout much of Missouri as well as southern Indiana, Illinois. And then for the rest of the weather, yes, it starts to modify. We'll take you through the weather. Snow showers, a few showers then in the southeast. Chinook winds for the Rockies, then the Pacific Northwest becoming wet once again. And you can just about see the lack of moisture for Monday, but the snow showers are in the forecast. More than likely, even Aspen, Colorado might pick up a little bit more, so that looks good for the ski resorts. In just a few minutes, Dave Schwartz will be back with a look at your Pacific Outlook. Veronica Johnson will be back to take a look at the forecast for Pacific Coast cities, and there's more for you to stay with. It. In 1906, San Francisco was surprised by a devastating earthquake. Danger struck again in 1989. What's being done to prepare for the public safety? The Weather Channel presents the latest information on earthquakes during a new documentary called Aftershock. How close are we to predicting the next serious earthquake, and what's the danger to other less prepared regions of the country? Don't miss Aftershock, a new documentary coming to the Weather Channel Sunday, December 9th, 6 p.m. Eastern. Pacific regional forecast. Let's do it as we head through the forecast period. If you live out in any of these areas out in California or even Washington, Oregon, Idaho, it's going to be looking fairly quiet. Why? Well, high pressure will keep things in control and they'll be keeping some sunny conditions out there for your forecast. We'll take a look at that in a minute. You'll notice, however, these isobars, the lines of light beige or brown on the map that you see, well, those are lines of pressure and they're going to be fairly tight over Southern California with that offshore winds. It'll be very, very strong. Santa Ana's, yes, already gusting in excess of 50 miles per hour through many of the uh, basins and valleys already. As far as that weather that you can expect, though, some very clear conditions for your morning hours from Santa, Mar Santa Maria well back south to San Diego, mostly sunny, 34 degrees for a low in Las Vegas, then 61 topping out for Las Vegas. Not bad there. Temperatures along the coast in the 70s. As we head toward northern California, Yes, it'll be sunny as well. A little bit of fog then for the valleys around Fresno, San Francisco as well. But they'll be looking nice as well with 62 degrees for afternoon high. The Pacific Northwest, fog will be the main factor, not burning off perhaps until the midday hours. But the temperatures will begin to warm up fairly nicely in the 50s for Portland and 47 degrees in Pendleton. 43 in Spokane, looking fairly nice under those mostly sunny skies. But Tell you what, let's take a look at that forecast in your own backyard coming up in just a minute. Good night. Forecast is going to be like high pressure or a dome of high pressure over the western part of the nation, and then it takes a trough in the east over the Ohio Valley. Some cooler and slightly disturbed weather pushing through this area. And then for our next period on Monday, we'll see more of a zonal flow from west to east more uh, normal type conditions for this time of year. As far as that forecast, there's the cooler air spilling down from Montana through Oklahoma. Even the Little Rock may see temperatures in the 40s pulling back up to the Kentucky area. Moderate and easy to take around southern Georgia as well as definitely Florida once again. Then on Saturday you'll notice still much of the same but then by Sunday everything begins to modify as all this sort of slides eastward. The 50s from the nation's capital, even around Evansville in Indiana, temperatures in the 50s. Then the cooler weather starts to spill in with temperatures in the 20s for Montana, especially around Bismarck. On off to the northeast, temperatures in the 20s. Weather, yes, we'll see a few showers around as the jet stream sort of takes that dive in the southeast. A few showers and even rain possibly for central as well as southern Florida. And then the snow showers start to clip Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. On up to the northeast, once again, definitely the winter. Winter season is here. Light rain possibly along the coastal sections of the Carolinas and a few a.m. showers for the northeast. Chinook winds pushing in to the rock forecast is going to be 50 miles per hour. Yes, 50 miles per hour. Already there are some wind watch warnings in effect for many of the canyons and passes. So if you're out traveling along Interstate 5, 10, or even 15, you'll definitely want to be aware and keep a firm grip on the steering wheel because it'll be kind of 
of gusty out there, even on off to the coastal sections of Southern California. As far as that full picture, you can see that the wind mainly is going to be in the west, and even possibly the continental divide looking around 30 miles per hour with the windy conditions there, and possibly not as heavy as 30 miles per hour, but just outside of the Albuquerque area. Conditions may be pretty gusty there. Wintry, or yes, wintry travel, it'll be looking quite snowy, light though, around Aspen, Colorado, and then only a.m. for Thursday.